So you might have heard about this little movie that came out. Walt Disney's live-action Mulan. A venture to recapture the magic of the animated classic while also making it palatable for Chinese audiences. There was actually a point in time where I was kind of excited for this movie, because I thought that the Walt Disney Company, a major Hollywood studio, was going to tell a non-Western cultural touchstone with respect and sensitivity. Before I really dig in, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I loved the 1998 animated version both as a child and as an adult. But I am aware that there are many elements of that movie that don't sit well with Chinese audiences. Not to say I don't enjoy that version, again, I still really love it. What I am saying is, I understand why they cut elements like Mushu, and if they wanted to go for a more grounded approach, they'd remove incidental musical numbers. That's all fine. And I don't want to spend a lot of time complaining about the changes from the original. Instead, I want to focus on the film they wanted to make, and the film that was delivered. And trust me, there's plenty to complain about there. The movie opens with Mulan's father explaining that Mulan has been born with the incredible gift of having powerful chi, which allows her to do stuff like this. Right here you can see the first major problem with the movie. The editing is terrible. It's distracting and sometimes outright painful to watch. It is possible to edit a tense moment quickly without it being an assault on the eyes. As is, it feels like a very artificial attempt to create a sense of excitement. The opening also brings up the issue of how Chi is presented, and a broader issue of how Disney's attempts to be more culturally appropriate have dramatically backfired. A really great video exists from Skir and J. Zhao, where they break down the biggest offenses. I'll link their video in the description below, but here are some of the basics they cover. One of the most prevalent issues, though, is the way they use and explain Qi. Qi is generally understood to be a kind of energy that flows through all living things that can impact a person's health if it's impeded. And while some martial arts movies will show Chi giving people supernatural abilities, it's not something that only a few people are born with like they imply in this movie. Everyone has Chi. But by presenting it in this way, Disney sacrifices that cultural sensitivity for the sake of making her seem like, well, a superhero. Or a born Jedi. And that conflict is at the heart of the movie's biggest problem. <gasps> Mulan 2020 has no identity and is instead a desperate attempt to placate everyone while failing on all counts. The tone languishes in this middle ground, trying to be more realistic and grounded, except when we see stunts like this. And this. And this. Now contrast this with something like Kung Fu Hustle, another movie influenced by Wuxia, where just the introduction gives us this, and this, and this. And this tone carries through the entire movie. It's consistent. Now, I won't complain about these stunts being unrealistic if the movie wants to have that kind of tone. But if it wants to be over the top and it wants to have this tone, then don't make Mulan's training culminate with her activating her great chi energy to carry a pair of water buckets up a hill. If you're going to have the raiders fight like this here, they have to fight in a similar way here. The atmosphere is at war with itself and it makes the movie feel directionless and visionless. And speaking of directionless... For those who don't know, Liu Yifei, who plays Mulan in this movie, got herself into hot water when she publicly supported Hong Kong police brutality in response to pro-democracy movements. But 
Disney decided to keep her on. Honestly, I don't know why they didn't take the opportunity to switch her out, because she is not great. This is my sad face. This is my curious face. And now I'm confused. <laughs> I don't think that was scripted. I think that was behind the scenes and got left in by accident. Because listen to this line delivery. Black Wind and I rode alongside two rabbits running side by side. I think one was a male, one was a female. Look at how she reacts to being told she's been matched. Look at how she reacts when she reveals herself to her commanding officer and asks to be executed rather than face the humiliation of her family's name. To be fair though, the writing didn't help her either. Mulan in this movie is so dull and lifeless and devoid of any character traits. And while again, I don't want to do a direct comparison to the animation, but I feel like it'll be helpful here. Look at this scene where she decides to go to war. He can see the love and concern for her father. The slight hesitation before she cuts her hair. The determination in her eyes. The compassion and the connection with the horse. The moment of doubt and fear as she's about to leave her home. This is an empathetic character with human emotions. Here's how Mulan 2020 handles the same scene. There's no emotion, and it feels like our protagonist is hardly even invested in this action. And if our titular character is not engaged, then the audience won't be either. Every problem in this movie is resolved by Mulan simply turning on her chi and brute forcing her way through it. It doesn't allow her to show any personality traits like being clever or risky. The closest we get to her showing something like cunning is when she tricks the raiders into firing on a snowbank directly above them and causing an avalanche that wipes them out. Making her smarter than stupid people doesn't make her seem smart. In the end, she's an empty vessel, a non-character. She should have been the linchpin to hold the film together, and instead she's a gaping hole where the central support should be. And from there, the rest of the movie crumbles as it fights against itself. Now so far I'd like to think that I've done my best to judge this movie on its own, rather than complaining about what isn't carried over from the animation. After all, they wanted to emphasize how different this is from the animated film. So they could have completely changed the story. The actual Ballad of Mulan is a rather short poem, and could be expanded upon in endless creative ways. So why do they keep reminding us of the original? Again, the movie is caught between two mandates. Break away from the 1998 animation, while also invoking nostalgia for the 1998 animation to sell tickets. Scenes have to happen because they were in the animated version. For example, Mulan triggers an avalanche, defeating the raiders and earning the respect of her comrades, but also accidentally revealing her identity. Here, she triggers the avalanche indirectly, but then that begs the question. None of these guys saw her trigger the avalanche. So why do they do this? You would believe Hua Jun. She's braver than any man here. And she's the best warrior amongst us. I believe Hua Mulan. 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 It's a weak moment because there's no motivation there. And this is just one example. If I broke down every single instance, then I'd have to rewatch this movie more, and frankly, I don't care to do that. The movie is caught between trying to fix problems in its predecessor, but also trying to invoke its predecessor. It's caught between a more liberating and feminist interpretation of the story, 
The more power I showed, the more I was crushed. Just like you. And one where Mulan dedicates herself to serving the existing order and the chairman. I I'm sorry, I mean the emperor. I know my place. And it is my duty to fight for the kingdom and protect the emperor. It adds a new element, a phoenix that is Mulan's family guardian, but doesn't change the story enough to have it actually do anything, other than be a video game marker when Mulan is lost. It adds a backstory for the villain, where the Emperor killed his father and took his people's land, which doesn't come up again. It could have been an interesting commentary on a cycle of violence, but then we'd be conflicted about Mulan kicking an arrow into his chest. It never commits to anything, and as a result, doesn't really contain anything. It's engineered to be as bland and inoffensive as possible. But while they succeeded at being bland, the inoffensive part has been a total failure. The marketing cycle for this movie has been a nightmare. I mentioned the main actress supporting police brutality in Hong Kong. There's comments by the director, uh, the costume designer that they sent to Chinese exhibits in European museums rather than hiring anyone from China. And really, the final nail in the coffin was the news about Disney filming this in the Xinjiang province where the Uyghur people are subject to detention camps, sterilization, forced labor, and cultural genocide. It's like filming a movie in 1943 Poland and thanking the SS in your credits. So while 75% of critics are content giving this a good score for its backgrounds, calling it a visual marvel, I will not give the studio the satisfaction of that compliment. Everything about this movie is frustrating. Every element of the production seems to actively aggravate me. Visually, it looks so cheap. The movie costs $200 million to produce. This movie costs $20 million and has infinitely better visuals. Story-wise, it is broken. Character-wise, it is empty. And while I always try to recognize the effort that goes into every cinematic production, my goodwill for this movie has completely run dry. I find it laughable that I was ever hopeful for this. So, instead of Mulan 2020, I'd like to offer a couple of alternatives. Kung Fu Hustle, which I mentioned before, is a great martial arts comedy they can find at least on American Netflix. And if you want a story about Western and Chinese culture intersecting, The Farewell by Lulu Wang is a fantastic portrait of a family divided in their values, and brims with heart, sensitivity, and thoughtfulness. Uh, with that, I've said my piece. Uh, thanks for watching, especially since this is my first video on this channel. I've got a lot of different topics I have lined up, but if there's anything in particular you'd like me to talk about, please let me know in the comments below. You can subscribe if you want to see more of me in the future, and you can find me on Twitter as well. Link will be over here somewhere, I think, or else in the description. I'll see you next time.